the Queensland Academy BBC School Report. We are secondary school from Dance Hall and our English club has been working on an amazing school report. I'm Pfizer and I'm Valentina and we will be covering three topics important to us that affect our school. We will also be covering how students at Queensbury Academy show their care and equality within sports. Now we shall hand over to our first story. Labels are for clothes, not for people. Over to you, Holly. Thanks, Val. Hi, my name's Holly and I'm here to tell you about the story that we've been investigating. Labels are for clothes, not for people. This is all about fellow students labelling each other. For example, if I was to be here in the library, I'd be labelled as a geek. Hi, I'm Annie and I'm here to tell you the facts and percentages of labelling and its bullying effects. On average, every young person will be affected by this type of bullying every half to every half term. This needs to be addressed because students are beginning to think low of themselves. Over fourteen percent of young people have admitted to considering taking their own life. Half of those people actually attempted to do so. This is heartbreaking. Back to you, back over to you, Holly. Thanks, Annie, and I'm here with Val, Sean, and Amelia to discuss this issue. So, Val, what's your opinion on labelling? I feel like it's really wrong. It really pressures people into doing something they don't want. It makes you feel like you can't fit in. Yeah. Um, and Sean, have you ever felt pressures by peers? Yeah. It damages you. You can never get back. Yeah, and Amelia, um, have you ever been labelled and how did it feel? Um, I was labelled a nerd and being a We could solve this problem by accepting that everyone is different. No one should be defined as geek, nerdy, gay, sporty, etc. Never judge a book by its cover. Thank you for listening. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Holly and Annie, for that interesting report. It's nice to finally understand what struggles children go through. But on another note, what, does that, what struggles does our society face on a day-to-day -day basis? We will now pass you on to our second important topic, which is how students at Queensbury Academy take part in charity events and help others. The boys will take it from here. Students these days have a bad reputation for only thinking about themselves and the force focus on the clothes they wear and gadgets, not thinking about others. Here at Queensbury Academy, we are investigating whether people care. This week at Queensbury Academy is our charity week, where, how, where each house hosts a range of activities to raise money for our charities. We have been doing lots of activities for our charities, for example, Cake Sales, Beat the Keeper, Easter egg hunt and guess the baby. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Henry. And I'm Sean. Um, and today we're going to be asking the head boy and head girl some questions about Queensbury's charity week. Um, so, why are Queensbury doing charity week? So, this week we're doing charity week to encourage the active participation of young children in charity. So, they get to learn what charity is all about and they get the wide community. Um, why haven't you chosen to do a cake sale? Um, so today we've chosen to do a cake sale because it gets all our students involved, um, they can show off their creativity and it's a really good way to raise money for our charity which is Dogs Trust. Last Christmas students at the school volunteered to help the elderly over the festive period by providing hampers full of food to those in need. Each form was asked to bring in food and other useful things that could go into the hampers and given to the elderly. This activity was to show that we care and respect everyone and that we understand what other people are going through. Here is Mr. Mr. Dumbledore, the genius, who thought about the hampers. hampers. Hi guys, me and Annie are doing an interview with Mr. Dumbledore. Hi sir. Hello. Um, why did you um, do the Christmas hampers? So the Christmas hampers is something that we've done, I did a previous school, um, and it, again, it was very, very successful. Um, Christmas, all about giving. Um, it's a time of year where people give presents, um, people spend time with their family and stuff. Um, and these, the guys we gave the hampers to at the Salvation Army don't necessarily have a lot of family or don't get a lot of Christmas. So it's nice for them to be given um, 
or something. Um, it's a time of year where it's difficult for them to get out. Um, a lot of them don't have a lot of food around that time, whereas you know, most of us are lucky enough to have nice homes with lots of food and lots of warmth. So it's a nice time of year for people to give a little bit back um, and, and feel a bit better about themselves. Okay. What were the elderly men and women's reactions? Really, really pleased. First of all, I don't think they see many young people, um, so it was nice for them. Nice to have uh, five or six of our prefects down there fresh, freshening up their afternoon. Um, and again, just really, really pleased. Um, the pupils at the school did a great job uh, creating these hampers, um, decorated them, made cards in them from the forms, etc. And it was just a great opportunity for us to go down there uh, with the hampers that you know people have given really generously and hand, hand over. And they're really, really pleased. We sang some Christmas songs. We sang some Christmas camp carols even, and uh, yeah, there's a really, really positive event. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No worries. Myself, Nora and others were spotted doing some litter picking around the school without being told to by a teacher, and we were treated to a trip to London to celebrate making a difference in the community. This shows that students at our school take action and don't just ignore litter on the playground. We spoke to Mrs Ogunbayi about the trip and why she wanted to reward the students. Hi guys, Sean and I are doing an interview with Mrs Ogunbayi. Hi Miss. Hello Henry. Hello Sean. Hi Miss. My first question is, um, why did you do the We Day? Why, why did you organise the We Day trip? Henry, you were there at We Day. The reason why I organised We Day is our students don't need to pay for we day tickets. They earn it because of the effort they make within the community. But the second question is, why did you organize um, first give? The same thing. First give is part of our PSHE curriculum. We encourage our students to work within their communities through the local charities. And the main reason is for our school to make a difference within our own community. Thank you. We think that charities and helping other people is important. And it's even more important for students to get involved. Thanks, boys, for your intriguing report. We hope to be hearing more about how we can help our society through charity work. To find out more, visit keech.co.uk, makesomenoise.com, dogtrust.com and Luton Dunstable Hospital's official website. And now finally, we will hand you over to a trio of girls who will talk to us about gender equality in sports and how even a small girls football team in a secondary school can feel intimidated by sexism problems. Over to Anime, Tia and Kira. At Queensbury Academy, we are lucky enough to host sports teams with both male and female players with any judgment from peers or staff. However, in the past, for some schools, having female sports teams would have been unheard of. This is because traditionally, sports have been seen as masculine activity to take part in. For example, sports like football and rugby that are more commonly played by men are often broadcasted more than women playing the same sport. Here at Queensbury Academy, we want equal rights within sports for girls and boys to choose to play at school. Annie has been asking one of the PE teachers at school for his perspective on this matter. What is it that makes the Queensbury Academy girls football team so successful? The best thing that they do is they turn up to training every week, all year groups, they're fantastic and they're really good role models for everyone else to aspire to. We always have lots of new kids that want to, want to start taking part because they've seen the success of what's going on and it's really pleasing to be able to see them develop from year 7 all the way up to year 11. It's fantastic. Okay. Why isn't there a girls rugby team? We've tried a few times over the years. I've been here 12 years and every other year we get a group of three or four girls that want to start a rugby training session. We then begin the rugby training session with maybe six, seven girls and then over the weeks it dwindles and dwindles to the point where Unfortunately, um, there's only one or two left that want to take part. Is there, is there sexism in sports getting worse or better? I think it's getting much better. For example, when I first started teaching um, 18 years ago, um, girls football was uh, not a big thing at all. And all of a sudden, um, up at Queensbury, um, I've been here 12 years, 
And ever since then, we've been in at least one of the district cup finals, and uh, we won our first cup final last year. And every year, we seem to be up coming up against more and more schools. So there doesn't, there isn't just a core amount of schools that do it now. They more or less every single school does it, and that's throughout the different sports as well, which is great to see. Okay, thank you. Thank you. In sports such as football, we think it is unfair how football and rugby are considered to be too masculine for females. Women are just as capable as men and should be given the same opportunities to show their skills. The Queensborough Academy of Girls football team do just that. They are very skillful, work and train very hard. This is reflected in the game of the win. The school have been very supportive and promoting the girls' success as a, equally as the boys' team. We will now hand over to Kira, who is speaking. as better than females and their sports are more mainstream and women's are, are like they're not showing them any channels and not like advertised as much. Um, I agree with Scarlett. I think uh, that there should be a change and female sports should be shown more as well as men's. Okay. So are there any sports that are presented more as certain genders? I think um, no, rugby no, and football no, are like no, portrayed more for like men than women. And um, they yeah because they, they show all the big like football matches on like like they show like the female ones on like like little channels that no one really watches and I don't think that's fair. They should advertise more for like more channels and stuff. Um yeah because um for the football they only show like the women's like cup finals and stuff like that and whereas men they show like most games, even if it's not a very good game and they could show a women's game instead. Okay. Is there a reason why some sports are portrayed to be more for one gender than no. I think it's I think the reason is sexism. So I think people have people have like um, gr grown up with their parents like watching like like more like male sports than female, and I think it's also media as well because no one really advertises for females. And I think that should be changed so that they're equal and they can each get a, the same amount of attention. Um, I think that um, like male sports were like the first ones there, and then people aren't very happy that the female ones have like came across as well, but they're just. Thank you both for your insight. There is still a long way to go for equality in sports, but in Queen at Queensbury we are taking positive steps in the right direction. Back to you, Valentina. Thank you, girls, and thank you, audience, for watching the Queensbury Academy BBC School Report. We would like to thank the English club teachers for their support and help, and we would also like to thank the media department. Have a nice day and stay tuned. Bye-bye.